All right, today we're going to do inserts on a details view. Remember, you can't do inserts on a grid view. Um, let me rephrase that. You cannot, using the default behaviors of a grid view, do an insert on a grid view. Could you write custom code to implement that functionality? Yeah, I'm sure you could. But by default, that's not something that comes with the package. That would be something you would have to implement on your own. Um, but we're going to look at doing an insert on a details view. And it's real similar to doing an update. First of all, we have to make sure that we have the two pieces working together. The two pieces being, of course, the data source and the visual aspect, which in this case is a details view. So if I remember right, I put in the SQL data source and insert update and delete command. statement in. 
and then we put the delete statement in so that we have the whole, um, all of everything. I think I put the insert, update, and delete in this guy. So in the interest of time, I'm just going to copy over the insert and delete, because it should be the same thing here. Put in the insert and delete so that now this SQL data source has all four of the SQL statements. The select, the update, the insert, and the delete. I have to go then and mark the visual as being able to delete and being able to insert. So now we have those four things going on. All right. Now let's just go and see what we get with the default behavior. And if I'm not mistaken, this is going to work. At least I hope it works. But it's probably not going to work in a way that we necessarily like. All right. So we'll take a look at it and talk about what we can do um, to make to get it to work the way that we want to. So let's go and run this. go in to the Red Cross. And I can edit this. And I can change the sales rep to Smith. And I can update it. delete the Red Cross. Notice what happened though. After I did the edit, it stayed on that same screen. And it would seem like it would make better sense to go back to this screen. Alright. Let's say I want to delete the Red Cross. Boom. The Red Cross is gone. <laughs> and we have an empty screen. Alright. So, must have deleted them. In fact, if we go here and refresh, yep, it deleted them. But, you know, deleting someone and just leaving you with an empty screen, that doesn't really seem to make sense. All right. So, last thing we're going to do is we're going to see if the ad works. So I'll go in here and I'll type new or I'll hit new. It gives me a blank screen which is fine. I can go in and I can type in 
Red Cross again. I'll, I'll add Red, Red Cross back in. Sales Rep ID, that's an ID. So I'll type in one. Nonprofit, yes. Click Insert. And then it took me back there. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really make sense. I'll bet if we go back to the grid, the Red Cross is there. So the ad worked. The problem is, is just we have a we have a details view that's doing a lot of things, and has a lot of flexibility, and it's sort of hanging us up because it is it is um, uh, it doesn't flow very well. All right. For one thing, why should I have to call up an existing customer to add a new customer? Right. That doesn't make sense. I should just be able to click new and go right to the new customer. All right. Secondly, if I am editing a customer, insert shouldn't even be an option. Um, there should be two distinct modes that that grid view works in. All right. There should be an insert mode to insert a brand new customer and an edit mode to either edit or delete an existing customer. All right, so there should be two distinct modes that that grid view works in. The other thing is that it's very awkward after I finish an action that it stays on that same page. After I finish the action, it should take me back to the grid view. If I click on Mike and I want to edit Mike, after I edit my Mike, after I edit my Mike, yeah, after I edit Mike, it should take me back to the grid view. So we're going to address all those things and we'll hopefully make it flow a little better. All right? Because, how do I want to say this? I could tell that everything was working. It just was extremely awkward for the user the way that you navigated through this. So we're going to do this a couple steps at a time. First of all, we're going to handle it so that there's two distinct modes for this. All right? There's going to be an insert mode and there's going to be an edit mode, all right? It doesn't mean I'm going to have two pages. It means that I'm going to have my page be dynamic so that if I get to the page one way, I'm able to insert. If I get to the page another way, I'm able to edit and delete, all right? So how are we going to do that? Well, let's think about this. If I'm adding a new person, or if I'm editing or deleting a person, I'm passing on the query string I'm passing on the query string the ID. Alright? That's the idea of the person that I either want to edit or delete. Makes sense, right? If I'm adding someone, I don't have an ID, right? I'm just adding them. So therefore, there will be nothing on the query string, or there could be nothing on the query string for an ad. So if I'm adding a brand new person, I don't have an ID yet. If I'm editing or inserting, or if I'm editing or deleting a person, I do have an ID. So we're going to use that to determine whether or not this person, we got to this page as a result of wanting to do an insert or wanting to do an add. All right, let's look at another aspect of this page. We look at the detail view. One of the properties of that detail view is default mode. And right now, the default mode is set to read only. So it shows us edit, delete, and new. All right. But there's other options too. I can default and go directly into edit mode, or I can default and go directly into insert mode. So here's what I'm going to do. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look to see if there's anything on the query string for the ID. 
If there's something on the query string, I'm going to go into, into read-only mode. If there's nothing on the query string, I'm going to go into insert mode. All right? And in that way, I can create a link to go to this page that won't pass anything from the query string for the ID, and I'll know to go directly into insert mode. All right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go onto this page. And I'm going to create a link. And that link is going to be URL to equal to detail.aspx. And I'm not going to put anything on the query string. That's my signal that I want to be into, go directly into insert mode. If I run this now, not going to work. It's going to give me a blank page. Why is it giving me a blank page? What's going on here? The details page doesn't know what you want it to do. The details page doesn't know what we want it to do. That's, that's a good uh, good explanation. Um, we want to add to that. Why does it know what to do? I haven't passed an ID. Right? So the default mode for that, that details view is read only. Read, read only implies that you have something that you want to display and allow people to edit or delete. All right? If you don't pass an ID number, you have nothing to display, so it displays nothing. So the next thing we have to do is we have to make it so that if there's nothing on the query string, we don't pop them into read-only mode. We put them into insert mode. So I'm going to create, go to the details view. the page load event and I'm going to say if request that query string It's null. Oh boy. What is going on? <laughs> Maybe I was trying to tell you something. Wrong. Yeah, right. Maybe I typed something really wrong. Okay. Yeah.
there's nothing on the query string. Then I want to go into insert mode. So I'm going to say details view one. Dot default mode equals <coughs> insert. insert. This is what's called an enumeration. It allows you to um, pick from only a certain number of defined, predefined options. So in other words, I can't type anything in for um, the mode. It has to be one of those modes. And so the enumeration allows me to um, control that I can't set that variable just to any value. I have to I have to set it to a particular value. So, what this says now is, if I come to this page and there's nothing in the query string for ID, then put this page, put that details view into insert mode. Otherwise, I'm going to leave it with the default, right? And the default being read-only mode. So, let's see how this works. So, I go and start debugging. I click insert a new customer and look I'm already in insert mode mm -hmm. all right I click on Mike and I'm in read-only mode so we can use whether or not something's passed on the query string as a signal as to what mode it's in and based on the mode we can switch between read-only mode or insert mode now, one thing I don't like is it still shows new here. All right. We can take care of that probably a couple different ways. I'm going to take care of it this way. I'm going to go into this guy. I'm going to make this guy a template field. And then I'm going to edit templates. And I am going to remove the delete. Oh, I'm sorry, the new. So if I'm in read mode, my only two options are delete and edit. All right. So now if I go and run this, If I go into an existing customer, there's no insert there, which is good because it doesn't really make sense to be viewing a customer then all of a sudden you're inserting one. It seems a lot more logical to have a, a separate mode for just inserts. All right. Another thing I don't like about this that I didn't mention, let's click delete. Wow, it's gone didn't even ask me if I was sure I wanted to delete. All right. Well, this again can be handled a couple different ways. What I can do is, now that I made this a template column, I can go on this, um, in this um, link, and I can say, on client click. Alright. How's on 
client click different than on click? You have a pretty strong hint in that question. Because one clicks for the client and the other one isn't. Exactly. On client click is defining some code that's going to execute if on the client side when you click that. On click is code that will execute on the server side when you click that. Keeping in mind that it has to make it to the server first for that code to be executed. But on click, on client click rather, we'll execute a bit of JavaScript. So we can put a snippet of JavaScript in. And we can handle this a few different ways. I'm going to take the easy way out and I'm going to say confirm. Do you want to delete? So now let's go and run this. I click on that. I click on delete. It asks me if I want to delete. If I click OK, they're deleted. If I click cancel, they're not deleted. Except they were deleted. say the return. Um, in JavaScript, um, returning the value sort of passes on the value um, to whatever event called it. And therefore, you need to return the result of that confirm back to the event that called it so it knows what the answer to the question was. Without returning the value, um, you ask the question, but you don't do anything with the answer. So you need to say return confirm. All right, my mistake. All right. Let's go back here. Let's insert a new one. I can type in red cross, sales rep ID 2 or 1, nonprofit, insert. Now it left me there, but I would think in most cases I would want to go back to the grid. Where we've already seen how to write code to do something after an insert, update, or delete takes place. Well, we haven't seen an insert yet, but we've seen an update and, uh, and delete. Do you remember where we put code that we want to execute after the database operation has been executed? All right, let's take a look and see if we can find some of that code. Details one, item updated. All right, remember, we're using this to check to see if there was an error. And if there was an error, we're displaying some sort of message. All right. If there is no error, then, we can take the opportunity to redirect back to the listing page, the grid page. So, I could say else response redirect
default.aspx. And that will, if the update was successful, it will send them back to that details view, or that uh, grid view. So we can write a similar fu function for item inserted and item deleted. So let's go and do that. on item inserted equals create new event on item deleted create new event And then we can put code in there, in each of these, to do essentially the same thing. Look for an exception. If there's an exception, display an error message. If there's not, redirect back to the listing page. And notice just in simple terms, what we're doing here. We took the default behaviors for this grid view, or I'm sorry, for this detail view, and we saw what it did. It did a great job on some things. It allowed us to insert and update delete without really writing any code at all, right? That's a good thing. However, it was awkward, some of the small aspects of it, like after you insert or after you delete or after you update or being able to insert, being, being have to, having to, to call up an existing row before we can insert a new one. That's awkward, all right? So we can make some little tweaks to the page. We're not writing tons of code. We're going with the flow. We're taking the framework and we're just writing little snippets of code that, that handle the framework, uh, that, that allow the framework to handle the situation exactly the way we want it to, instead of settling for the default behavior. It's a very common theme in this. It's not, it's going to be very rare that you're going to use the classes in the framework exactly as they are. All right. More often you're going to need to tweak them a little bit. All right. So, let's run this. Let's insert a new customer first. Insert it took us back to that grid, which is what I would want to have happen. If I go in and edit someone, no, I wanted to click that instead. If I go and edit someone, I could type in Zeller's Inc. And after I update it, it takes me back to the grid. Maybe. There we go. And finally, if I go in and delete the red cross, it confirms. If I click cancel, it stays there. If I hit OK, it deletes it and takes me back to the grid. So now that's relatively user friendly. It's not baffling. I don't have to do anything goofy like having to call up a person before I go in and insert them or be able to be in the middle of editing one person and inserting a new one, or after I delete someone, getting a blank screen, and so on. Now, these are the things that I want you to pay attention to on your project. These are the very things I want you to pay attention to. Assume 
You know, how much can you assume about a user when they visit a web page? Are they going to understand what they need to do? No, it needs to be very clear. It needs to be intuitive. So as you're going through and, and writing this, assume the perspective of someone that doesn't know how the coding works on this. And think, if they add certain tasks to do, add a customer, change a customer, delete a customer, run through those scenarios and look and say, does my page make sense the way I have to do it? Or do I have to do something goofy like, oh, after I delete someone, it displays a bank blank page, so I have to hit the back arrow a couple times to get back to the listing, then hit refresh to see that it's gone. Users aren't going to know how to do, you know, aren't going to know to do that, right? It needs to be very clear and very intuitive. All right? One other thing we could do is if I click edit and click cancel, right now it takes us back there, which is probably okay. But the other thing I could do is when I hit cancel, I could send them back to the grid view. Let's see how to do that. I don't remember how to do that, but I can take a guess. I know it's going to be some sort of event, right? Because clicking cancel is an event. So I'm going to type in on. On mode changed is the one. And I'll create a new event. I'm going to go in my code behind and say, on mode changed, I have my event argument E. changing. And again, common theme here. This is a different sort of event, but it also has an E argument, which is an event argument just like this is an event argument. The event argument, remember, is sort of the police report, is what happened, all right? And um, we can then look at that, and we can decide what we need to do. So E dot on. If E dot cancel, then I can redirect to the, to the default page. So now if I go in here, call up someone, go in to edit, and then cancel, should redirect me back to the grid view. And there we go. All right. Now, I'm 
might not want to do that, but you should know how to do that. And if it makes sense for your particular application, you should do that. Now, question, what if I want to not allow deletions at all, all right, from, from that page, all right? If that's the case, I don't need to go into read-only mode. I can go into directly into edit mode, all right? So let's say I didn't want to delete at all. My only two options for this page were either insert mode or edit mode. Well, I could change this. Instead of going into read-only mode, if there is an ID, I could go into edit mode. So now, I go into here, I'm automatically taken into edit mode. If I hit cancel, I go back to the details view. If I hit update, I go back to the details view as well. Now there's one thing that we didn't do. All right. And what I'd like you to do is I want to post this example that I'd like you to go to lab and try it. I did not make in insert mode, I did not make a drop down for this, and I did not put a validator for that. All right. So right now, if I do an insert, it's going to blow up. All right. There should be a validation control for this and a drop down for that. We have about a half hour. I'm going to go upload this to Canvas. Take from now until 1130 or so and work on that. See if you can get those two things. A required field validator in insert mode for customer name and a drop down for sales rep ID. Let me go and post this now. And then I'll go and unlock the door. And you can have at it. It will be in the week 12 and 13 folder, and it will be the bottom one on the list, which will be like sales website three. This one. All right. We'll see you in lab. <laughs>